If the heart is not single-minded, the body does not regulate its strength. If commanders are not sincere in their need, soldiers are not brave and bold. Those skilled at defense do not suppress anyone, and those skilled at war do not fight with anyone. As for those who understand the way of what to prohibit and what to allow, what to open and what to close, they ride the momentum of the times and use the desire of the people to take the world. When people follow orders sincerely, even if small in number, there is no fear. If people don't follow orders, even if large in number, they are as if few. Meet the excited with calm. Await the disturbed with control. Be formless so as to master the formal. Respond to change without contrivance. Then, even if you are unable to attain victory over opponents, opponents will have no way to attain victory over you. Anything that has form can be overcome. Anything that takes shape can be countered. This is why sages conceal their forms in nothingness and let their minds soar in the void. Oh, we'll when the best generals up. use arms, they have the way of heaven above, the advantages of earth below, and the hearts of men between. Then they use them at the opportune moment, deploying them along with the momentum of the situation. This is why they have no broken troops or defeated armies. As for mediocre generals, they do not know the way of heaven above and do not know the advantages of earth. They only use people and momentum. Although they cannot be completely successful, their victories will be in the majority. When it comes to inferior generals and the way they use arms, they hear a lot but confuse themselves. They know a lot but doubt themselves. They are fearful in camp and hesitant in action. Therefore, they are likely to be captured by others. The way of the warrior is to show others softness, but meet them with firmness. To show others weakness, but surmount them with strength. To shrink back from them, but reach out to counter them. When where you are coming from is not where you are going, and what you show is not what you plan, then no one can tell what you are doing. You are like lightning. No one can anticipate where it will strike, and it never strikes twice in the same place. Thereby, your victories can be 100% complete in communion with hidden knowledge. When no one knows your door, this is called supreme genius. Generals must have three paths, four duties, five practices, and ten kinds of security. The three paths are knowledge of heaven above, familiarity with earth below, and perception of human conditions in between. The four duties are to secure the nation without increasing armaments, to lead without selfish interest, to face difficulty without fear of death, and to resolve doubts without trying to escape blame. The five practices are to be flexible without being pliant, to be firm without being stiff, to be humane without being vulnerable, to be trusting yet impossible to deceive, and to have courage that cannot be overwhelmed. The ten kinds of security are purity of spirit that cannot be clouded, far-reaching plans that cannot be stolen, firmness of integrity that cannot be changed, clarity of knowledge that cannot be obscured, not being greedy for material goods, not being addicted to anything, not being a glib talker, not pushing others to go the same way, not being easy to please, and not being easy to anger. A military leader must see and know independently. To see independently means to see what others do not see. 
To know independently means to know what others do not know. To see what others do not see is called perceptivity. To know what others do not know is called genius. The perceptivity of genius is what makes victory a foregone conclusion. Those for whom victory is a foregone conclusion are those who defend what cannot be attacked and attack what cannot be defended. This is a matter of emptiness and fullness. If there are rifts in the ranks, disaffection between commanders and officers and the contentions they hold are not honest, the discontent builds up in the minds of the soldiers. This is called being emptied. If the leadership is enlightened and the generals are good, then the different ranks are of like mind and their wills are in concert. In human nature, nothing is more valuable than benevolence. Nothing is more urgent than wisdom. Benevolence is the sustenance. Wisdom is the means to put it into practice. With these two qualities as the basis, all that is beneficial is consummated with the addition of courage, strength, intelligence, quickness, diligence, cleverness, acuity, brilliance, and perspicacity. But if one is personally undeveloped and has technical skills without the benevolence and wisdom to guide them, to add all sorts of embellishments in fact increases harm. Therefore, if one has courage and daring without benevolence, one is like a madman wielding a sharp sword. If one is smart and swift without wisdom, one is as though riding on a fast mount but not knowing which way to go. Even if one has talent and ability, if one uses them improperly and handles them inappropriately, they can only assist falsehood and dress up error. In that case, it is better to have few technical skills than many. So, the ambitious should not be lent convenient power. The foolish should not be given sharp instruments.